Assalamualaikum to all. My name is Nera Nasser and I am from University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Lahore. And the topic of my abstract is internal nutrition and its need for units to manage the necrotizing enterocolitis. Here is the introduction of my topic. First of all, I'm going to discuss about the necrotizing enterocolitis. Necrotizing enterocolitis and inflammatory gastrointestinal disease. It is a serious condition that can affect the newborn babies where tissue in the bowl, small intestine and large intestine become inflamed. Doctor may also discuss necrotizing enterocolitis as inflammation of the gut and how it is occur and how it is caused is basically the infection and dangerous bacteria that grow in our um, gut and inflammation of the gut uh, proceed toward the necrotizing enterocolitis uh, in newborn babies. And um, if we talk about the internal nutrition and the internal nutrition uh, is the gastric and enteric feeding tube that is used to ex according to the excess side maybe from the nasal maybe from the gastric and it depends on um, how we need to proceed it and if we talk about the facts and figures then we find out in south asia and africa more than 60 percent of pre uh, term birth occur and if a baby born with the malnutrition and um, then there's a lot of uh, chance, uh, chances like uh, preterm babies, then there's a lot of chances to develop um, any infection, um, so uh, an infection and inflammation and disease. So um, they proceed toward the necrotizing enterocolitis. Pakistan is the fourth with the highest amount of preterm births among the 10 countries. Data shows that nine out of 180 infants with the low birth weight who are admitted to the Agahan University um, Hospital developed in, uh, necrotizing enterocolitis. And if we talk about when should I start feeding with the necrotizing enterocolitis? Um, it is a very uh, debative uh, question. Prolong, uh, prolong withholding of internal feeding carries the risk of extending need for parental nutrition. Uh, because a patient with necrotizing enterocolitis, they, um, they have indigestion problem. So due to the indigestion, the food, the feeding that is given to uh, the baby, newborn baby, uh, they are not uh, fully uh, get the nutrient from it. So the body not absorb the nutrient not able to fight with the uh, uh, with the disease um, and with the infection so it's moved toward the malnutrition so that is why if we not proceed internal feeding then it extend toward the parental nutrition intravenous uh, feeding is uh, parental nutrition is basically so which is associated with the infection and metabolic risk parental nutrition are more have more chances uh, to uh, develop in more infections and metabolic risk that is a pathetic decision so therefore uh, this is uh, there is uh, we need uh, to start internal feeding as soon as safely possible and Method for and uh, feeding uh, that we are used in internal feeding uh, for necrotizing enterocolitis. In the past 30 years, there was not any cure for necrotizing enterocolitis, but uh, the new treatment for necrotizing enterocolitis is available, including broad spectrum antibiotics. Cessation of internal feedings, nasogastric decomposition, and cardiorespiratory support. These are the methods you usually use today uh, very well uh, to treat the necrotizing enterocolitis, but exact 
and the best treatment for necrotizing endocarditis is still not available. Method that was used for delivering the necro uh, internal nutrition uh, for necrotizing endocarditis are basically three, bolus, continuous, and intermittent feedings. And uh, they, that, um, these three type of uh, like bolus feeding, intermittent feeding, continuous feeding, these uh, three type, these all three are best depending upon uh, how uh, much you need to feed the uh, baby, to feed the patient. It's uh, continuous feeding is basically uh, 24 or you feed the patient. And intermittent and bolus feeding is depend is um, about fifteen to thirty four minutes, or almost sixty minutes. Yeah, you you are uh, in giving this type uh, feeding in to bolus and intermittent feeding types. So. Neonates or preterm infants need proper nutrition for growth and development and long term health. So we need to choose the best method in an internal feeding to feed them because during the period uh, they are new uh, they are newborn babies they are infants they are in developing stage so if we not provide enough nutrients in this stage so they if they survive from necrotizing tyrocolitis then they develop a lot of um, uh, problems in future And what is the research gap um, when I'm, uh, I'm right about the um, research with the abstract, when I'm writing down this uh, abstract, there's a lot of research gap that we need to um, doing research on it, work on it. So there are more, um, there are the, these three that I'm going to discuss modified internal feeding introduced introduced to prevent from necrotizing diarrhoeitis but exact pathology that i'm all, uh, already discussed that exact pathology of necrotizing diarrhoeitis is incomplete the nutritional management of post necrotizing diarrhoeitis infants can be complex like if a person a patient have necrotizing enterocolitis and they surgically medically remove it. Um, they, they will perform a surgically or medically procedure on it. Then after necrotizing enterocolitis, the things are also complex for them. They need nutrients. They need a lot of uh, support um, to manage, uh, to cure it, uh, to overcome the uh, pressure and the stress the body suffer from the post necrotizing and in, in, in necrotizing enterocolitis. So, um, uh, they are there is also need to manage it. How to manage it? We also need to doing work on it. Subsequent studies are need to clarify the optimal internal nutrition treatment to reduce the severity of necrotizing enterocolitis and the incidence of post necrotizing enterocolitis complications such as short bowl syndrome and cholestasis if um, we are going to uh, if we are going to treat a patient that have necrotizing enterocolitis we should need to um, put a lot of things in mind that how we are going to treat them, how much the survival rate they have, and what are the best treatment we can give on them. And that is only happen if we are going to process, we are going to um, uh, find out this is our responsibility as a researcher to find out a best treatment that in future are going to um, uh, save a lot of lives. So that is why these are the gaps that I'm giving, uh, that I'm discussing uh, discuss in previous slide. We should need to um, pay attention on it. We should need to work on it so we can find out a better and most um, accurate uh, treatment 
uh, for survival of our infants. So in conclusion, malnutrition increases the mortality or mobility rate in hospitalized patients, affecting all life stage group uh, people, uh, but infants or new near suffer in high rate malnutrition if they suffer, if patients suffer because necrotizing in direct light is patient mostly mostly uh, move toward a mobility and mortality due to the malnutrition they are suffering from so necrotizing in direct light is increase the rate of low birth weight and very low birth weight uh, in, uh, due to the feeding problem they suffer from the feeding problem because due to the indigestion uh, they are unable to digest the nutrient uh, that is given to them. So they are moved toward the malnutrition. Internal feeding so far considered a better option to solve the feeding problem in necrotizing endocolitis infant to prevent from malnutrition or mortality rate as well. But to find the best option future, researchers need to carry out to save the life of new needs. So we should need to consider this point in our mind to save our new uh, youth, the new generation that is going to be the uh, future of our um, Sorry, due to some technical problem, my slide is going, was going shut down. So let's proceed further. Thank you for listening to me. Allah Hafiz.